Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to prove that the square root function is continuous everywhere it's defined. So this function is defined on the set bracket 0, infinity. So first we'll prove it's continuous at 0, and then we'll give a proof to show it's continuous at every positive number. Therefore, it will be continuous everywhere in its domain. Before we do the proof, recall the definition of what it means for a function to be continuous at a number. So we say f is continuous at x equals c if for all epsilon greater than zero we can find some delta bigger than zero such that for every real number x with the property that the distance between x and c is less than delta, we have the distance between f of x and f of c less than epsilon. So that's the definition we're going to use to do both proofs uh, in this video. Okay, so first let's do the proof for zero. Okay, so proof. I'm going to go a little bit fast because it's two proofs in one video. So before we do this proof, we have to figure it out. So I haven't actually figured it out yet. So let's go over here and figure out how to do it. And then we'll write the proof over here. So we know we have an epsilon greater than zero. And we're going to need delta. Okay, we need delta. So we know that the distance between x and c is less than delta. So c is zero. So we know that x minus zero is less than delta. And we want this to imply f of x minus f of c less than epsilon. Well, f of x is the square root of x. f of c is f of zero. So it's just the square root of zero. We want this to be less than epsilon. So we have the absolute value of x less than delta. And we want this to tell us that the absolute value of the square root of x is less than epsilon. Well, we can drop the absolute value here. So we just get square root of x less than epsilon. And then you can square both sides. We get x less than epsilon squared. OK? So what we can do is we can choose delta to be epsilon squared in our proof. OK? Now let's go back and formalize our proof. So we'll start the proof by letting epsilon be greater than 0. Now we're going to choose our delta. So choose delta equal to epsilon squared. Then for any x, and x here is in this interval here, with the distance between x and 0 less than delta, we have, and now we have f of x. So f of x is the square root of x minus the square root of 0. OK, so that's equal to the square root of x. We can drop that. And we know x is less than delta, right? So this is less than the square root of delta. But delta is equal to epsilon squared. So this is the square root of epsilon squared. And that's just epsilon. Right? It's actually the absolute value of epsilon. Well, epsilon is positive, so we're good. Good stuff. So this proves that f is continuous at x equals 0. right? So we started with an epsilon greater than 0. We chose our delta. And then for any x in this interval, where the distance between x and 0 is less than delta, we showed that the, di that the distance between f of x and f of 0 was less than epsilon. So that's the first proof. All right, the second proof. Now we have to prove that it's continuous at all positive numbers c. Okay, So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I think this one's going to be harder. So let's see, scratch. So again, we have our epsilon greater than 0. And we need to find a delta greater than 0 such that whenever the distance between x and c is less than delta, that needs to tell us that the distance between the square root of x and the square root of c, right, f of x minus f of c, that needs to be less than epsilon. 
So this is going to take some trickery. So my, my thinking here is that here we have x minus c, and here we have the square root of x minus the square root of c, right? So what I'm thinking is maybe we can multiply this by the square root of x plus the square root of c over the square root of x plus the square root of c. We're basically rationalizing the numerator. And I think this might work. Let's see. This is a minus b, a plus b. So that's a squared minus b squared, right? Difference of squares. So this is going to be x minus c. All of this is an absolute value. And then here we have the square root of x plus the square root of c, right? So then the numerator is less than delta, right? So this is less than delta. Then we still have the stuff on the bottom, the square root of x plus the square root of c. Now this piece here, this square root of x, it's, it's a positive number or it's zero. In any case, this fraction is less than or equal to delta over the square root of c. And this is good because c is not zero, right? c is not zero. And so now we want this to be less than epsilon. So I think if we choose delta to be epsilon times the square root of c, that's exactly what's, what's going to happen. So let's try it. Let's go ahead and formally, uh, formally prove it. So we'll start by letting epsilon be greater than 0. And we're going to choose our delta to be um, epsilon times the square root of c. And this is a positive number because c is a positive number. Okay. Then for any x in 0 infinity with the distance between uh, x and c less than delta, we have, and so now we look at the distance between f of x and f of c. So that's this here, square root of x minus square root of c. So square root of x minus square root of c. And we can rationalize this. And when we do that, we did it here, so I won't do it again. You end up with the absolute value of x minus c over um, the absolute value of the square root of x plus the square root of c. You don't really need the absolute value on the bottom, but I'll go ahead and put it, right? Because the bottom is going to be positive. Okay? And this is less than delta, right? Because this is less than delta over, and then here I'll, I'll do it in steps, square root of x plus square root of c. Now we'll drop that square root of x, right? Because this fraction on the left is smaller, right? Because the bottom is bigger. So you can drop that square root of x. That's key. So here you have square root of c. And delta is equal to epsilon square root of c over square root of c. And these cancel, and so you get epsilon. And that completes the proof. I'm really happy that this worked out. I kind of like doodle it on the side before I made the video. I thought, oh, I think it'll work. Let me just try to make the video. And if it doesn't work, I'll just delete the video. Uh, but it worked out. So good stuff. I hope this video um, has been helpful. And that's it.